that new wheel. Hey, who's in the do trip? What is going on, Bet Records? We are back with some more pickums for week two of the NFL season. I had a lot of uh, crazy picks for week one. We did do a recap on our latest video if you want to check that one out. Uh, a little bit of uh, fantasy football pointers as well. If you want to go back to that one, make sure to check out our uh, latest video on the podcast. Here. I should have thought of this in week one. We should have all taken all our guesses and then at the end of the season, like tally it up and who was right. Was right with all of them? Yeah. yeah. We well, should have. But I, I, I remember back. everybody I picked, so yeah. we'll do that after. Let's okay. look back at the old VOD after some other time. True, true, true. Yeah, we can go back and look at that. Um, we got some great matchups here again, starting it off with a fire matchup. Both teams are 1-0 and with a victory last week. Thursday night football, we got the Chargers at the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Cole, let's start with you. Who do you think is going to come up on this one? I'm going to take the Chiefs, just because of how easy they made that game feel for them last week and how hard the Chargers had to fight to beat the Raiders. I have to agree with Cole on this one, but not for that exact reason. I know the Cardinals weren't really that strong of an opponent. The reason I'm going to give this to the Chiefs is because they're at home in Arrowhead, the loudest stadium in football, rallying mm -hmm. behind their team, I just believe. I believe that this will be a very close game. I do believe I don't see a blowout happening. I believe yep. it'll be a one-score game, mm -hmm. but I do think the Chiefs will just edge it out. It, I think this will be a high-scoring game, too. It'll just be a Oh, yeah. You know, gunshots back and forth, back to back. Yep. I think 20 20 minimum, you know, for the teams there, scoring wise. Um, the spread is minus four, Kansas City, Justin. Do you think uh, they can win by more than a field goal in this case, or do you think it's still kind of a toss up? What was that? Uh, Kansas City, current odds are minus four for this matchup. Do you think we could cover the spread here, or do you think it might be a little tricky? I think you can cover the spread. Yeah. I think Kansas City wins by touchdown or five. Yeah. yeah. All right. I like it as well. I think Kansas City pushes through with a field goal, but I think you're right at home. Chargers are unstoppable as well, but uh, I'm thinking, you know, Patrick Mahomes is that good. The defense did, you know, pretty decent as well last week. Yeah. I'll give it to Kansas City as well. I'd say Kansas City as well. Let's see. It's a CH. KC across the board. Yeah. I think CH breaks the leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, starting off our Sunday slate here for week two, we got the Panthers, the 0 1 Panthers at New York, facing the 1 0 Giants at home here. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. going, I'm going with the Giants. <clears throat> I think that they have some momentum coming into week two. You know, they got a big win on the road. Saquon Barkley is back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there were a lot of questions of him coming into the season. I think he shut down those doubts, and now he's very confident, and now that he's going back home to New York. I think the Giants will take this one. I think they'll take it pretty easily. Yeah, we saw a lot of struggles with Carolina offensively. Yeah, they put up a lot of points. Yeah, they did okay. There's a lot of question marks at defense as well, which definitely didn't help last week against uh, the Browns there. I think, you know, Saquon definitely proved himself and, you know, proved himself to not only Daniel Jones, but the coaching staff as well. Yes, I truly am back. Yes, I can still freaking do it, you know, that kind of stuff as well. Not that they had many doubts, but just to kind of put a nail in the coffin, like, you know, yes, I I'm here. I'm back. So um, I'm kind of in the same boat at home. I'm taking the Giants as well. What about uh, what about you two over there? I'm taking the Giants. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not super sold on either team, but I think I would take the Giants. I think they have momentum, and Saquon is just a high point for them. And yeah, I, I, think, I think the Panthers are just, I think they're overrated in general. They're, yeah, they have their biggest weapon, CMC, back, but if you want to take advice on what Trenton said, that doesn't seem like they want to use them as much. That's their only weapon. Exactly, that's the whole problem. Yeah, and right. DJ Moore, it's too, I guess, right but DJ that. Moore... I mean, DJ Moore didn't do well last week. He got six points. Hey, Robbie Anderson. Yeah. And, like, are they – so is there, like, a quarterback battle going on in Carolina between Darnold and Baker, like or is it pretty set on Baker? It's, they're pretty set on Baker. It's kind of going to be one of those things, right, if after week six, you know, something happens, he's playing like trash, you know. I think he did fine. Um, like I said, he did get, you know, some great passing work with Robbie Anderson on that one. Got a rushing um, touchdown. He got the too. rushing touchdown, yep, yeah. as well. So he did his job. And, of course, they couldn't pull through. I think it's Baker's job to lose at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, across the two picks in a row, we're all across the board with somebody. Yep. Yeah. Giants, I think they cover the spread of negative 2.3 as well. I think they can win by a field goal easily here as well. <clears throat> um, next game up on the slate here, the 0-1 Colts are playing against the 0-1 Jaguars at home. Uh, two teams that are winless. One has a tie, so it's not really a win, but it's not really a loss either. They're still undefeated. We'll say that. Um, I will say the Colts kind of 
shocked a lot of people because we were on the broadcast last week saying that the Colts were just going to stomp on the Texans. Yeah, they were supposed to. And that just was not the case. They had to rally back just to force the game into overtime. Yeah. And if you had to do that against the Texans, the Jaguars and the Jaguars showed in the Washington game, even though they lost, that they have made some improvements. Mm-hmm. I saw Trevor Lawrence. He does look more comfortable now yep. in the pocket, making those passes. This game is going to be close. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how Indy will adjust if they'll come out fast, if they're going to come out. Because when did they <clears> – because <throat> weren't they losing to the Texans at one point, like, badly? Yeah, I just yeah. don't remember if it was first half and second half they came back or where it really went to the <clears throat> back-and-forth point. But, yeah, they were uh, kind of struggling right away at the beginning against Houston, trying to put mm-hmm. it together and piece it together. Maybe it's a chemistry issue. <clears throat> um, you know, I didn't wa- – I wa- just watched it on, I think, Red Zone. I didn't watch it. You know, just that single game. So I didn't see how the defense did it as well. Um, you know, obviously, tw- if Houston's scoring 20 points on you and they don't really have a star guy, it's kind of concerning, I'll say that. Um, I think I'm going to go Jacksonville as well. Um, they did have James Robinson get a touchdown this week. We forgot to mention on last week. So he got two, that's right. Um, Travis Etienne did drop a touchdown pass in the end zone, just couldn't get his hands underneath it. So um, not to say he's bad there, but there's definitely opportunities missed as well for uh, Jacksonville in this last week here. I think uh, first game at home here. I think they can. Uh, I think they can put it away. I think Jacksonville as well. I just like the upside in that team right now. Uh, just I th- in general. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna break it. I think I am gonna go with Indianapolis here. Okay. I think that just they're just gonna shake out some of the little lag they had in Week One. Yep. <clears throat> they're gonna come back because now everyone's like, oh man, this team's overrated. I think Jonathan Taylor's gonna come out. He's gonna run the ball. Matt Ryan's gonna be hooking up with Pittman. That works. For I'm cool with that. <laughs> so I, I see the Colts squeezing Colts. it out, but but it, I, it'll be a competitive game. Yeah, cute. I, I believe it'll be low scoring too. I don't see either team getting into the 30s in points. Yeah, no, I agree not with 30s. that. Not 30s. It's a tough, it's a tough pick. Honestly, I think it can go either way for sure. Um, I, I, I'd say maybe just the Jaguars might just have, might just be able to pull it out though. All right, all right, making the third decision, 3-1 to one Jacksonville here for us uh, this week in week two here. Moving on to the next game, it's the Miami Dolphins who are 1-0, and got the victory last week against the Ravens, 1-0, and also getting the victory playing at the Ravens. The Dolphins didn't get the victory over the Ravens. No, 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 they, no, Dolphins <laughs> I, won last I, I, week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so who do we got in uh, this one, Ravens at home? Do we like uh, Tyreek Hill and the Dolphins defense in this week? What do we, uh, Justin, you, uh, you can start with this one, what do we think? Now this one I'm kind of... <clears throat> I'm torn, I'm a little torn. Now this one's kind of a coin toss for me. Um, you know, Miami last week against the Patriots, the defense looked good, the offense looked good, but they only, only one touchdown was scored on offense. Other than that, New England's defense kept them at bay, but their defense also scored a touchdown. So I think that this game will also, I think this game will come, I, I, I think this game will go into overtime if you ask me. All right. And I'm going to go with the Ravens with a Justin Tucker field goal to win it. 64 yarder, JT. 60, 67 yard. What was it he made last year in Detroit? I thought it was 64. Yeah, it was like 67. Really? Yeah, I can't remember he what it was. A, he has a world yep. Yeah, he's got the current record for sure. For sure. Uh, Cole, what do you think? Ravens, Miami. Uh, I'm gonna go with Miami. I think they'll Ugh. pull it out of their ass somehow again. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know. Okay. I like Lamar, but I don't know. I just don't like the running back situation. At least Miami is a better. At least they're not hurt all the time. They're running back. That's true. They have better That's... options there. I like Tyreek Hill. I don't think Tyreek really had that good of a game he, last yeah, he week. He did. He did. O- points, he still got over ten points. He had. He had over hundred yards. Still. Yeah, eighty or ninety. He, something he like didn't that. really stand out though, from what I remember. But at the same time, who on the mm-hmm. Ravens' offense, other than Lamar Jackson and the running backs getting a touchdown every once in a while, stands out to you? Bateman. Uh, Bateman got a touchdown. Bateman got a touchdown. He got a touchdown. Um. Um, Dodson? Duvier, no, that's not Duvernay. Duvier. Duvernay got two. Yeah, he came out of nowhere. Yeah, he didn't come out of nowhere. He should have only got well, probably the one. He only got four catches and got two touchdowns, so that's a pretty hot stat there. Um, Mark Andrews is the other big name, of course, yeah. for the Ravens. But I don't know. I just, I, I, for some reason, think that the Dolphins are going to pull it out. Mm. Okay, Q-tip. I would go Dolphins, honestly. I think that's just uh, So we got a 2-2 two, two tie. You said Ravens too, right? Yeah. I said Ra- I say Ravens easily. Um, all right, Cole, I'm picking a number one or two. Pick a number. Two. Oh, it's two. So we're picking Miami. 
consensus pick, tiebreakers pick in Miami. I still think Ravens. I think Ravens win by three. But uh, nonetheless, here, next game, Justin, we're going to look for your thoughts, of course, first here, because your favorite team, the 0 one Patriots, are playing at uh, Pittsburgh against the 1-0 Steelers after uh, making the upset against Cincinnati mm -hmm. there for the Steelers. What do we think? <clears throat> Pittsburgh's coming to this game banged up. Najee Harris is going to... Najee Harris, he's probably going to be out, he's right? He's going to play. He's going to play. It's going to be questionable. What, what was his injury? Yeah. It was bad. It was just something. So, and I thought it was his foot. So he had a preseason <laughs> foot injury. In a set, yeah, yeah. Um, he had a pre. He has a he had a foot injury in the preseason. They didn't play him at all during the preseason, I believe. Maybe a couple towards the end in the last game, I think. But uh, it is his foot. Well, he did say today at almost ten o'clock. He said that he was going to play with the Bats. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, but we also have T.J. Watt, the key of the defense out. Yep. And that might cause a little disruption because that's the guy who causes chaos for opposing offenses. Other than that, when you <clears throat> when you look at um, the Patriots defense in fantasy, Patriots defense is always a highly drafted team. Yep. And when you have who, Mitch Trubisky, at quarterback, who didn't look half bad last week yep. against a defense that isn't even drafted, that's a free agent waiver in fantasy, and he's – he looked decent, I think, against a high defense like the Patriots. It's not going to look good. Um, I'm going to take the Patriots, honestly. And, <clears throat> and not to mention now, <clears throat> like I said, your biggest threat on defense, T.J. Watt, is gone. <laughs> right. Who's yeah. the captain of the defense who causes the most chaos. I just, that defensive blow is going to take it, and I just think the Patriots will pull it out. All right. Pretty, I, I think it'll be a comfortable win for the Pats. Yeah, I would lean Steelers, but y'all three picked uh, the Patriots, so yeah. we're going to go with the Patriots. I think Steelers at home, yes, there's all these, you know, Trubisky isn't that good. I mean, the definite injury in the defensive side is definitely questionable. But they, they and T.J. Watt obviously made a big, a big impact until the end of that game. But again, they put the hurt on Joe Burrow. Patriots have a way better offensive line, so yeah. that is definitely something to consider as well. I, I like the Steelers at home, but... Better offensive line, not having their best defensive player. There it is right there. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, bend over and take this one. But nonetheless, uh, next game on the slate here are the 0-1 Jets playing at the Cleveland Browns 1-0. I'm going Browns. Easy. Browns. Cleveland. There we go. Pretty easy one there. Joe Flacco, I believe, should be still starting. I don't think Wilson's ready until week four at the very earliest there. So um, definitely kind of concerning there. Um, next on the board, after passing through that one, we got the 1-0 Bucks at New Orleans to play against the 1-0 Saints at home. Uh, Cole, we'll start with you with this one. Do we think Tom Brady's uh, going to piece it together here? You know, in all honesty, I think it's probably going to be the Saints. The Saints have given Tom Brady trouble throughout the all of his career in the first place. On top of that, the Bucks proved that it was kind of hard for them to get a touchdown last week. They got one, but it wasn't like it was easy in any way whatsoever. <clears throat> I think the Saints looked pretty decent last week, especially coming back and winning that game. Um, I just think history of giving Tom Brady trouble is also just a big factor, so I'm wrong with the Saints. I gotta agree with Cole on this one. I just Ooh. I believe that the Bucks kind of struggled against the Cowboys mm -hmm. this past week, and <clears throat> even though the Saints kind of had their troubles with the Falcons, I just see more offensive potential with them than the Bucks after that first game. The Bucks could prove us wrong mm -hmm. again, Week One, still getting the jitters out. Right. But for now, I have to go with New Orleans. Yeah, I think the biggest kind of downfall of their. You know, again, obviously they still won, so we can't talk bad about you know how the Bucks did in Week One. It just was they played against a trash Dallas offense, is what it was. Yeah. Um, Micah Parsons was all over Tom Brady on defense. Uh, Trayvon Diggs had, did had some you know good highlight uh, plays and blocks as well, uh, kind of covering those wide receivers there. I think Tom Brady being out for those two weeks during the off season might have contributed to some miscommunication or something. To I don't know what the deal was. Yeah, they got the touchdown with Mike Evans, but that was it. Tom Brady should be throwing for at least two touchdowns every single week. I was even texting with my dad during the game, and I basically told him I'm, <clears throat> I observed Brady's body language like just throughout the entire game. He just looked like he did not want to be there. Yeah. He it just wasn't energetic. He was just kind of like, mm. I'm going to do my job and then go back home and chill out with the fan, which is fine yeah. and respect to that. But and, like at the the end, and at the end of the day, people are giving Brady shit for skipping out on those two weeks. 
for personal family matters. At the end of the day, people need to realize you're a father first. Yeah, dude. His, uh, his new theme song needs to be that song from High School Musical. The basketball one. Get your head in the game. Gotta get you, gotta get you, gotta you. Get your fucking head in the game, Tom. Fun what are you doing here? Fun fact, I've never seen a movie of High School Musical. No, Come on, it's on reruns. I, will I say I, I watched it on purpose? No. But it was on Disney yeah, late at night all the freaking time, dude. Purpose, oh, I no. I don't think I've ever watched the full, really you know, high school Not musical shit. I don't think I've watched the full of all three of them. But um, I want to lean the Bucks, and I don't know why, but uh, I'll go with the Saints. We're all picking the Saints. So Moving on. Moving on. This one? <laughs> Damn it. Now we got a tie. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Q-tip. <laughs> Moving on. Hold on. Hold on. We got a tie here. It's 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> Q-tip. Upset. Pick the Bucks. Wait, it's 2-2 two, two, or 2-1. Wait, no. I two, thought two. you said you were taking the Saints, though. No, I'm taking the Bucks. That's who I lean. Oh, you're taking the Bucks, though. You just said pick the Saints. Well, you Whatever. said I would take the All right. Q-tip. Pick, pick a number, one or two. Five. No, no, one or two. <laughs> one. <laughs> okay, we're just picking the Saints. Yes, Tiebreaker sir. goes to the Saints here. All right, next moving one. Moving on, moving on. Next one, this one's kind of a head scratcher because mm-hmm. how the two teams looked in week one, the Washington yeah. Commanders yeah. are 1-0 and after beating the Jaguars, and the Detroit Lions, who actually put up a really great fight last week against the hot prospect Eagles yep. going into yeah. Detroit. This is, I think this is going to be a really good game. Um, I think I'm gonna have to lean with Detroit on this one. Me too. I just Me think too. I just think the running game in Detroit is the Far best it's ever game. been. Even yeah. When, even when Barry Sanders was around, who was who was the second guy behind Bernie Sand or er, Bernie Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders. Bernie. 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 Fuck that so- social. Yeah, that dumb socialist fuck. Um. <laughs> anyway, hot take. Hot take. Whoa. I don't Whoa. remember who was the backup there. They have a good line though. They've you know. Jared Goff isn't a great quarterback, but he's got time, and that definitely proved and shown last week, especially you know with those with those but, offensive linemen but, kind of making those blocks as well. But he's good enough he's to have a great receiver like Amari St. Brown. No. Yep, Amon St. Brown. Yep, yep. And who was the other who was the other receiver they got? Um, DJ Chark, I think, right? DJ Chark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe he got forty-five receiving yards and a touchdown, something like that. Yeah, Chark got a touchdown. I'm pretty sure. So. Yep, yeah, yep. But, I, st- I think I'm going to go with the Lions on this one. I think they're going to run it down Washington's throat, their defense. What's the I spread on this one? I'm curious. The spread on it. Uh... Ooh, minus two for Detroit. So uh, as long as Detroit covers and they get they win by a field goal, it's uh, it's done. Lions are the favorite. That's where we're all leaning as well. Uh, I, I kind of want to see the Commanders. Do I knew you were going to go the other way. Well, that's uh, three against one. I think, I think Wentz running so, with some momentum, you know, I think they can run it back again. Yeah, no, so I think it's definitely possible. Yeah. He's just got a hard on for Carson Wentz. One thing's I, for sure I, is that this is going to be a good game. game. Yeah, this should definitely be a good game as well, and I agree with that. Wentz is on a roll. We saw him get, I believe it was four passing touchdowns. We talked about that in our last video uh, yesterday as well. Um, but, yeah, they got some great options out there. McLaurin, Samuel put in some work as well. Jahan Dotson, the rookie, catching a touchdown last week. Uh, a lot of potential for the Commanders this season. Uh, running back situation is a little iffy. Antonio Gibson, I believe, got, still got 10 fantasy points. But, nonetheless, here we will go with this, uh, the Detroit Lions for this one. Next matchup, I think, is uh, fairly easy, I will say. It is the Atlanta Falcons, who are 0-1, playing at L.A. against the defending Super Bowl champs. Los Angeles Rams, who are also 0-1, may I add, but is this Rams who easy? Did? Who, I think how this did, is Rams easy. How did Marcus Mariota do last week? Um, and again, uh, mediocre. Yeah, they they only lost by one point, right against uh, the against the Saints. Field goal. Um, let me uh, let me <clears throat> see Mariota. As a homegrown Atlanta-born kid, I'll always root for the Falcons. Okay. <laughs> Except for in that one Super Bowl. Yep. <laughs> yeah, look at your shirt. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Three twenty-eight. Somewhere in the shirt. Um, yeah, Mariota had twelve rushing attempts, seventy-two rushing yards, a rushing touchdown, and two hundred and fifteen passing yards. So Not Cordero bad. Patterson really put in some work on the ground this week again, kind of rolling off his uh, you know momentum from last season. Will that continue? Who knows? Big question mark there. He was team MVP last season. It's true. It's true, and it is true. he's uh, definitely looking that way again this season. Uh, anyone fighting for Atlanta this week? Against nah, the Rams? Nah, I'll go Rams. Because it's in L.A., right? Yep, yep. Rams are at home. Rams are negative 10.5 favorites. So they got to win by a touchdown, a field goal, and then one point. See, so. I don't... 
As an MMA fan, I don't go off the minus 10, 50 odds. I go off, like, the minus 100. Okay, yeah. Because that makes more sense to me. Well, in, so when it's negative 10.5, let's say that the score ends 0, 0, right? Technically, the Rams have negative 10.5 points, so that's what it is. So mm-hmm. if Atlanta has 10 points and the Rams finish with 0, Atlanta wins the spread because... Or vice versa, vice versa. So, sorry, if they had ten points and they had zero points, so they would minus ten so and be minus point five are points. Favored to win by ten points. Ten and a half. Yep, you got okay. it. Yep, yep. So you pick over under for that. So What's the next pick. Next pick here after a pretty easy one, we got the one and O Seahawks playing on the road in San Francisco against Trey Lance and the zero and one Forty ers You know, can they put it together this know, week? I'm gonna go with the Seahawks here. Oh, come on, man. After that game last night, they have they are on a momentum swing right now. Their confidence is at all time high. Everyone was projecting them to be losers <laughs> mm-hmm. out of the gate. They expected Russell Wilson to just plow through them on their home field. Yep. The morale is at an all time high right now in Seattle. I think that they're going to roll into, San, into uh, Santa Clara, California at Levi Stadium, and I think that they're going to take it to the to the 49ers. San Diego, right? Yeah, that's where Levi Stadium is, oh. Santa Clara. Cole, what yeah, do you think? Fun fact, um, fun fact, there's San Francisco, but their stadium is n- like an hour from San Francisco. That's really weird. Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's a toss-up on this I, one. I think it's a toss-up, yeah, too. Really I think maybe Trey Lance can pull I mean, we don't really know what potential Trey Lance really has yet. Because last game, I don't think that's a fair game to base anything off Trey Lance on. So I agree. I think I'm going to take San Fran just because I still like, I don't know, I like their offensive we- weapons better. I think, yeah. I think they'll be a better team this year overall. It may take them a little bit longer to get started than we originally thought, but I think they're still going to be a really good team this year, so I think I'm going to take them. That's a fair point. Q-tip. I will take San Fran. I still think they have some potential this season, so I don't think there's any reason that I don't think I'm like high on them, but I think that they have a fair chance. Yeah. I just thought I thought Gino looked pretty good last night. I thought he looked great in the first five minutes, and then after that, it was <laughs> meh, meh. It was he fine? Yes. Did they have opportunities? Yes. Metcalf and Lockett only had a couple receptions yeah. each. They didn't have more than 50 yards, I believe. Both the, tight, both the touchdowns went to the two tight ends. The tight ends. Yeah, it was just like the Denver game where they used their tight ends, both of them. Um, Albert O and then um, it's not Breit, it's uh, Beck. Someone yeah. Beck. I can't remember what his first name Andrew is. Beck. Yeah, Kyle Beck, I think. or I don't know, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know really what the deal is with that. Get to the wide receivers. If they're covered, I get it and dump it off the tight ends or the running backs. I get it. But um, definitely something to kind of monitor there. Um, I'm going with San Francisco as well. That is three to 3-1 there. I think at home they are negative 10-point favorites as well, <coughs> so they're projected to definitely win. I think overall um, they'll win. Is it going to be by a field goal? That's where I lean. I don't think they cover that 10 spread uh, just due to the Trey Lance question marks. But as long as the weather is uh, treating them well, I think they'll be uh, definitely better off this year, especially at home, or this week, I should say. Next game is two 0-1 teams who both got some uh, tough losses against some great teams in week one here. We got the Arizona Cardinals on the road at the Las Vegas Raiders. 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 I'm, go- I'm, go- I'm going with Oakland. Let's Oakland. Go. Shut <laughs> up. Shut up, you old timer. Las Vegas. No yep. Sin City. I think definitely the Raiders. I want to check the spread because I'm curious. Negative six for Vegas. I do think they cover that, honestly. I think they win by at least a touchdown. Um, Cardinals looked pretty dang sketch. I mean, they have a lot of injuries. Um, you know, they got Hopkins out for six weeks. They had another wide receiver injury, Rondell Moore. Yep. He should be the wide receiver, too, exactly. and should be making so an on- impact. Yeah, and he was roughed up, and me and Cole talked about that. And I'm like, okay, hey, they have two guys of their starting wide receivers that are definitely out. I think they forced Ertz to play. Maybe he was, you know, on the fence, and they're like, yeah, you're playing. He caught a touchdown. He got 10 points. I think he only got three Excuse me, three, four receptions or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, garbage time. Kansas City blew him out, obviously. A lot of question marks on defense. Their defense did not do well against Kansas City. Now we got Devonta Adams. We got Derek Carr. We got Darren Waller. We got, I can keep going. There's going to be some question marks here for the defense for the Cardinals all season long until they prove otherwise. I think, yeah, Vegas all the way. Vegas definitely on that one. The next one is fairly goddamn easy as well. 0-1 0-1 teams here facing off on week two. The 0-1 Bengals who got screwed 
by the Pittsburgh defense, as we mentioned before. And the Dallas Cowboys without Dak. Cowboys are at home. Uh, yeah. Bengals. Bengals. Bengals for Cooper, sure. Cooper Rush at quarterback for the Cowboys. All right. I don't know. Let's see yeah. what he can do. But if Dak Prescott couldn't even score a touchdown in the home opener, how is Cooper Rush going to do that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He only played for four minutes, I think, towards the end. Had one drive, and that was yeah. basically the end of the game anyways. So um, I'm going to go Bengals as well. Dallas are, of course, not favored. They're plus 7.5, so that means Bengals are minus 7.5. Bengals need to win by a touchdown and then a point. I think that they would cover that easily as well. Yeah. Uh, I take that back. I think they win by a field goal. Dallas' defense is still good. I have to say it again. Uh, Dallas' defense, defense is still good. But if the defense is on the field the entire freaking game, then yep. it's going to get beat down. Yep, yep. I'm not confident in the Dallas offense. That's why I still think Cincinnati will easily pull this one through. Um, I just worry about Joe Burrow getting hit because we saw it again with Pittsburgh last year or last week, and we saw it all last season, obviously. So um, Joe Burrow came back last week. I keep going all day with that, but I think the Bengals will pull that one through. Um, next one, we got the undefeated Houston Texans, 0-0-1, facing the 0-1 Denver Broncos. Let's ride. Let's ride. That's why I keep forgetting. I was going to do it again. Um, I'm going with the Broncos because the Broncos crowd is finally going to hear that saying on the Jumbotron. Broncos country, let's ride. I, I think I'm going Broncos too, for sure. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm still high on the Broncos. I want to see them be good. I uh, really hope they'll pull that out. All right, we'll go Broncos. I think i got to pick them as well because they're at home. they got Russ. I I think, I hate to say someone's washed, but I think Russ is pretty washed. For fantasy, I don't think he gets more than 20 uh, points a hey week. Hey, man. Yeah, Russ, fuck, fuck cool. I think Russ I'm got sorry. over last game. He also had 345 passing yards. He did last week. interception and a few rushing yards. He didn't do bad. It's just they kept fumbling at the freaking goal line. That's true. To where he couldn't even get a chance to throw a touchdown. That's true. Right? He had one touchdown. That's he had multiple point. opportunities, but the running backs kept freaking fumbling the ball. That's true. That's true. Hopefully they clean that up this week with those fumbles and they just hammer it through a weaker Texans defensive line. I mean, I'm, again, we know that they tied with Indianapolis. There's a lot of question marks in that game, but... Yeah, I, I think we got to go Broncos. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and I didn't know that, which is good. I just know he only threw for one touchdown, and I needed him to throw two. But nonetheless, um, next game up, we got the one and O Bears uh, playing at Green Bay against Aaron Rodgers and himself in Green Bay. And himself. Yeah, Literally that's about it. Himself, again, him and Aaron Jones, baby. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go with the Packers, I guess, yeah, just because I think Aaron Jones is. You know, well, he is light years ahead of Justin Fields. And, I mean, they still have Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon were running effectively yep. for the most part. I think if they just continue that scheme against the Bears, the Bears aren't going to be able to answer. Yeah, I think Green Bay still has a good defense. They played against the great Vikings. You know, new offense, new plays, new coaching staff. Justin Jefferson, right, the number one wide receiver this year. Um, hot take. Um, I, I think Green Bay will take this one away at home. I think they'll maybe win by a field goal. The Bears were not doing good until it started to pour freaking rain in their home stadium. Yeah. Then they pulled it through. Because they're used to that. Right, exactly. <laughs> they're on the road. We don't know what the weather's going to be like, but it's not going to be puddles like that. They're not going to be used to, you know, their home stadium in bad weather, right, where they practice in the rain all week and, you know, all that stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm taking Green Bay as well. Mm, I'm a little tough on this one because <clears throat> I was actually watching a documentary last night on how this is the greatest rivalry in football history. Really? And there's one thing that goes into this is that no matter how bad your team is, if you're facing your biggest rival, the game will always be close. I agree. I don't think it's a blowout. Uh, do I, I, it, it won't be a blowout. Oh, yeah, I don't no think way. it will. No, not a blowout. Let's see what the what the spread is here. Green Bay minus 10 is the spread. I was going to say they were going to win by 10 points legit here, so I could Fuck see it. them winning by a touchdown or a field goal, though. Fuck it. I do think Green Bay bounces back. All right, yeah, I'm going there as well. Well, they should have uh, the Lizard King, Alan Lazard, back as well for the week. King. Yeah, the Lizard King, dude. They should That's have him back. Should have him back for week two. Lizard King, uh, hopefully, we'll see if he goes off. If he does anything, we'll 
we'll see. Right, that's the question. We saw Christian Watson drop a, drop a wide open pass. Would have been a touchdown. Would have been some great momentum for Green Bay against our uh, home team, the Minnesota Vikings. Luckily for us, uh, Christian Watson is trash. So, uh, he, he's got room to improve. He's got 16 weeks, but Rodgers, I'm sure Rodgers wasn't very happy about that because that would have yeah, been a game changer. Uh, next game here is the 0-1 Titans at the 1-0 Buffalo Bills. I am taking the Bills. Bills. Buffalo Soldier. Bills country. In the heart of the night. Bills country. Let's try. No, no, no. We can't do that. Uh, Buffalo minus 10 for the current uh, odds here today. I do think that they win by a field goal or a touchdown. I'm not sure about the 10 points. <clears throat> We love Derrick Henry. Cole loves him more than most. I think he, he's still obviously a beast. They did great with Hilliard as well. Maybe that's going to be a true factor all season long, kind of a Kareem Hunt role. Um, and a lot of it was kind of the passing work, and that was the thing that they don't want to do with Derrick Henry. We know that. He's a hard wrecking ball running back, gunning through the middle, plowing people over, right? He's not a quick dump off to the side. And He's a stampede. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think Titans certainly have a chance. I just think this Buffalo offense is massive. Buffalo defense we saw put the herd on the Rams, um, especially with Von Miller as well getting added there. I think uh, I think that definitely slows Her- Derrick Henry down a little bit. Um, he still could get a touchdown, of course, for fantasy purposes, no, but I think Bill's, Bill's easy, I think, on this one. Yeah. I'm even thinking about benching Henry, honestly, and putting Kareem on You there. can't. You can't. I know I can't, but at the same time... <laughs> <laughs> Same time. Well, defense, I you know, what did you say though <laughs> earlier? Uh, Derrick Henry has done what against the Bills the past couple I mean, years? The past few years, he does, he has ran for over a hundred yards every single time. Right. So. My, my sophomore year of college, I remember me and my roommates did this. So one day I was in the liquor store and I picked up one of these. Oh yep, the sports Bud Lights. Yep. Yeah, they don't do those anymore, and I'm Mm-mm. pissed because me and my roommates every single week. So I plowed through the whole thirty six rack. Yeah. And Surprise. then, and then <laughs> each week we had this big pong table. We put the cans next to each other. Who's playing? And then one by one, like every single day before we went to class, we picked one game, put who we thought was going to win on top of the can of the team we the thought was going to lose. Yep. And that year the Eagles went up to beat the Patriots, and they stacked. I came home from the Super Bowl that night to it stacked in a pyramid with the Eagles on top, That's and it. I had a beautiful, <laughs> and I had a beautiful woman over that night. Okay, and uh, just a and and then and then I was very agitated. And she said, "Kick the pyramid down." I said, "I'll do it." And I kicked it. So, Good yeah. job. All right, last pick. <laughs> Final picks. A great Monday night football matchup. Both some great teams, and of course, we love it because uh, hometown heroes, Minnesota Vikings. Uh, first game on the road this year, week two. The one and zero Minnesota Vikings will take on the Eagles, a very high uh, upside and high potential team who also is one and zero playing at uh, Philadelphia. I think the Vikings are going to kill the Eagles. I don't oh. think they'll kill them. I think it's going to be a super close game, but I still uh, I don't want to root against the Vikings at all. I don't, but I just like, I don't know. I like Hurts. I like A.J. Brown. I like that offense a lot. I like the Vikings offense <laughs> a lot, too. But I think the Eagles, just because the Vikings always choke in the end, I think the Eagles will win it by a field goal. Yeah, uh, Philadelphia is minus two favorite, so if Philadelphia wins by a field goal, field goal, they would cover as well. I am going to pick the Vikings a little bit biased, but our defense did awesome last week. I mean, yes, we know the Green Bay situation. They didn't do very well on offense. We know that. Um, defense is just going to improve here on out. Justin Jefferson is just a freaking beast, and Delvin Cook will get us a first down anytime he touches the ball. So. Right. I think it'll be a close one. I think each team scores at least 25 points. It'll be high scoring. I think the total may be around 53 points total. I'm going to just throw a random number out there. No, I'm going to just throw that number out there. Um, I'm going to go Vikings. Cole, did you go Eagles? Yeah, I'm going Eagles. Justin. Q tip Vikings. Skull. Skull. Vikings, take it away. Let's win this game. Vikings do take it away. That is our final pick for this week here. Uh, Let us know who you think will win this Monday night game as well as the Thursday night one if you're tuning in uh, today as well. Um, Let us know your thoughts on both those games. Will we cover the spreads? Will we not? Will uh, the Vikings continue to move on to 2-0?
Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning in as always. Make sure to subscribe for more fantasy football content as well as weekly NFL picks every week all season long. Thanks again for tuning in as always. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Let's ride. Peace. Peace. Let's ride. <laughs>